We're going to go with our first segment uh, about how Aaron Rodgers thought that he can get away with this homeopathic vaccine versus Kyrie Irving of the New Jersey Nets. And this particular article comes from our friend of the show, Hemet Meta, Friendly Atheist. Um, and basically, in this uh, one, the uh, article talks about how in August of this year, Aaron Rodgers, who is the quarterback of Green Bay. Uh, has it been over two minutes, guys? Can you tell me if it's been over two minutes? I think it's been over two minutes, right? Yeah, we're in so it's over two minutes. Cool. Um, you're supposed to say yes. It's been over two minutes. <laughs> just say yes. Got to say yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. So um Aaron Rodgers quarterback from uh from the green bay packers and I, I have to say this because it's in my chicago contract fuck green bay was asked if he was vaccinated for COVID 19 and he said that he was immune and he was immunized immunized and it turns out that uh his version of immunized was undergoing an alternative treatment uh for a uh, COVID 19 um immunization even though I still, in all of my combing of the interwebs, I did not find out what this said alternative treatment was. But let's keep going. So it turns out that it did not work. And Aaron ended up with COVID. And he cannot return to play for the Green Bay Packers. Again, fuck Green Bay. Until the test is comes negative in November 13th. And this issue with this whole thing is that he wasn't truthful when he was asked about being vaccinated and he did put his teammates at risk. Uh, I want to give this particular quote from the article, which says that the quarterback has followed masking and other protocols while the Packers facilities, according to the e for ESPN, I, I heard they, they talk about sports and whatnot, but he has not worn a mask in the team media's auditorium nor on the sidelines during games. And other unvaccinated Packers players have done interviews and press conferences via Zoom. But he didn't particularly follow that protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a pin in all of that. And I'm going to let you guys jump in and hear your thoughts when you heard said news. Yeah, you know, I I think so. I I'm not a I'm not a sports ball watcher, so so my, mind my ignorance a little bit. But like I, I understand that I, I can you know if I'm being super charitable, I can imagine a situation where this guy is put on the spot and he you know maybe has mixed feelings or something and, and doesn't give a straight answer and then it gets wrapped up in this whole thing. But I think what really gets really uh, makes this a problem is the fact that he wasn't following these other protocol that he went on to get some other kind of treatment, which shows that, you know, this wasn't just like a, a silly little slip up. That's like, oops, oh no, like it happened, but I didn't mean it. And uh, we're on the steps to rectify it. Like, as you pointed out, he put his teammates at risk. He could have put other fans he might've interacted with at risk. And, and I think what scares me the most about this kind of thing is that people, you know, really look up to these celebrities, like, it's one thing to be spreading misinformation, but to now have to think about, oh, oh shit, people could be lying about being vaccinated. That's, you know, that's like the next, next level of, uh, uh, how do you even begin to, you know, engage with that sort of behavior? Um, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's, it's, I don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we're having to interrogate everyone and go through their medical history and everything, but it, it's, when we continue to create these situations, it's almost making it a necessity, you know, uh, it's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. I, um, I, I agree with that. I mean, like, I don't necessarily, I, I get why some people can get kind of defensive about, you know, uh, dis disclosing their vaccination status. Right. And because like, you know, getting vaccines or not getting vaccines and vaccine mandates versus not vaccine mandates and masking and all this other great stuff has basically been the dominating conversation for at least mostly to most of 2020 and all of 2021, you know, but but the reason why it's been such a d dominating conversation is because we're talking about a public health issue now. And um, 
and and I and I see a lot of conflation with people concerning their rights as an individual and also you know being able to uh you know to 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 forego if they want this vaccination because of whatever type of thoughts or feelings or whatever that they have uh about it um, but I'm going to also shut up right now, and I'm going to let Richard get into this particular conversation. What are your thoughts, Richard, when you read this? I don't think I need to say anything. I think you two have covered everything. I'm going home. No. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, right, first of all, I had to look up who the Green Bay Packers were because I'm British. And okay. okay. Well, hold on. I'm sorry. You said that word, so hold on. Fuck Green Bay. Continue. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh... <laughs> Well, it, it's it's apparently an American football team. You'll probably call it football, but that's something different to us over here. Uh, that's so, what I heard. <laughs> American football's just rugby with armor. First of all, I want to get that out of the way. You know, we we don't need the armor to play that game over here. But <laughs> re regarding the actual story, <laughs> there's, there's so many nuances and like subtleties and like little bits and different issues. I think that it, under the surface here. And mm -hmm. I think the main focus, the main problem, uh, as you've both already touched on, is that he appears to have lied. Yeah. Now, if if he wants to go and ignore all the medical advice and uh, research and just go to some kind, his, his, I think it said it was his personal doctor, the mm -hmm. the article, and get some homeopathic treatment. That's entirely fine. I'm not. I'm not stopping anybody having their rights if they live in the middle of the Arctic. And the clubbing seals for a living, and that's what they want to do. And then they're not within a hundred miles of anyone, and they're not going to be. You go and live your rights, but we don't live in that society. We live amongst other people, and this is the point of the thing. You know, you've got a responsibility, and right. if if you want to go and get an alternative medicine instead of having the vaccination, and then you infect somebody else. To my mind, you yeah, should you should then be like, and and I'm, I don't know if it has infected anyone else, but the potential is there, right? And if it's sh if it's shown that he has infected someone else, I think you should be criminally culpable for it, mm. because you, I, I've literally within the last two weeks of recording, I know someone who has died from COVID, mm. who who ignored the the uh, the instructions to stay at home if you had COVID. They went out, uh, they infected someone else who fortunately recovered, but they themselves got really ill. They ended up on a ventilator and within two weeks, they, they ended up dead. So I've now got a funeral to attend to because of people like this. Mm. And that is why they should be criminally culpable. Yeah, yeah I, I think... I kind of was saying something similar because, you know, I, I definitely have some libertarian leanings. Like, I, I don't want to force someone to wear a mask or take a jab. But the the issue is that when you're expressing your right to not undergo certain treatments or something, that eventually at some point interferes with everyone else's right to just exist in the society that they were born in. Like, they don't have, you know, people who are immune compromised who need extra protection don't have the privilege to be able to say well i'm just going to exercise my freedom on this matter no right. like you making that choice is impacting other people and your your rights to freedom end where they impact someone else's rights to freedom those things have to be considered um it, it, i so yeah it's it's difficult because i totally understand the issue with with mandates you know i i don't want to force anyone to do something but it, again it it, it that right ends right where it interferes with someone else's and that's yeah and should it be all about rights anyway because at the end of the day i've got a right and i wrote this in my show notes i've got a right to go and drink 20 bottles of whiskey if i choose to but why would you want to do that you know it's a stupid thing to do mm. you know <laughs> you're not going to like live long from doing it and it's the same with not taking the vaccination but he's not just done this. He's not just chosen not to take the vaccination. Mm -hmm. He's apparently lied about it. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's gone and he's put himself in the public sphere. And he's going, he's traveling around the country. He's, he's probably, I dare say, meeting a lot of fans. He's working amongst his teammates. And he's putting all those people at risks. 
right. and he's lied about it and he knows he's doing it and that's some that to me is the most important thing he's not just exercising his right to freedom mm -hmm. what he's yeah. doing is deliberately deceiving people right right well, I, I wanted to bring up something from uh, another article that I read just to get a little bit more context uh, concerning this uh, whole thing. And uh, he recently went on uh, Sirius XM on the uh, Pat McA uh, McAfee show. I I'm not familiar with him. I guess that's a sports person. I don't know. But anyway, uh, but one of the things that he said is that I am not an anti-vax flat earther. And he said that I have an allergy to the ingredient, to an ingredient, never said which one, that's in the mRNA vaccines. I found that a long-term immunization protocol to protect myself, and I'm very proud of the research that went into it, even though he never said what it was. And he also noted that on the CDC's website, it says that you, if you have an allergy to any of the ingredients that you should not get one of the mRNA vaccines. So those two, Moderna and Pfizer, were already out, again, allegedly. And he also said that uh, he had some issues uh, concerning uh, the J&J &J vaccine uh, because of the clotting issues, even though that that really only happened to a small percentage of people, but I digress. Um, and he said the hearing of multiple people, again, a small uh, population of people actually got this and no one died, uh, had adverse events around J&J &J, and the J&J &J shot was not even an option at that point. Uh, so I, I, I will credit him for, I, I guess, like thinking about this, but my issue specifically with him is that, you know, I, I I know that there are people who are uh, allergic to maybe something that's in the mRNA vaccines and people who happen to be, you know, have like some autoimmune, uh, you know, co uh, conditions. And also some people who are like allergic to shellfish may have like a, a more more uh, vitriol re uh, reaction for lack of a better term. Uh, but even, even with people who have like a, a shellfish um, a allergy still for the most part recover, you know, after they actually get the shot for the mRNA vaccine. So, I, I'm curious for this person who plays uh, American football, which is rugby with armor. And um, and I think that Richard was kind of throwing shade on football players in the United States saying that, hey, you need armor to play. And we just play free, you know, because because we're British and damn it. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. I'm coming back to my point, which I forgot, but I'm going to remember in a minute. Anyway. There never has been any type of disclosure specifically from him about what exactly is it that could be an issue with any of these vaccines. He's just he's just saying stuff. And I don't want to necessarily misrepresent anybody, but and I don't necessarily want to straw man anybody, you know, but at the same time, this interviews and the information that I found is coming directly from here is vague as hell. And I'm more, I'm thinking more of like my, my dude, you just didn't want to get the shot. Let's just keep it a buck. Keep it a thousand percent. Keep it a stack. As they say in my neck of the woods, again, fuck Green Bay. You didn't want to get it <laughs> for whatever it, reason. It, it, it does <laughs> seem very much like he's trying to, uh, and, and fair enough if he has a genuine allergy as an allergy. But sure. The time to disclose that is before you're going to get the shot. You know, it, it seems like it, he was told that, let, let's just consider and be, you know, be generous and say, yeah, you had a genuine genuine allergy to it. Sure. When when <laughs> the thing came in about the, the, the all the plays needing the shot, he should have disclosed that then. Right. Uh, perhaps if if it was genuine, which you know, <laughs> but if it was genuine, it seems that the the reason he didn't is because he did, he was scared of not being allowed to play and losing money. Mm -hmm. but that's not a reason to lie when people's lives are at stake, and that's been most generous to him. Uh, 
you know, if if he's not disclosing this until after the fact and after he's been caught out, you know, is it is is it genuine? Like Cynthia says, is is being very vague about things, mm-hmm. very very thick. You know, people die. How many people die? Or does he know that right. information? Uh, from from what I can gather, I think is it one in a million people develop blood clots from it. That's literally the same rate as miracles. That is the mathematical rate of a miracle. So, you know, is it that much of a risk to take? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and I mean, like, and that that was my issue with him because, especially like when he was asked straight up, "No chaser, are you vaccinated?" And he was like, "Oh, I'm immunized." immunized. I cannot say that word. Immunonize, immuninize, whatever. Immunize. We'll immunize. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm immune. I'm what Arden said, and <laughs> and that and and to that, people are taking that. Oh, you got the vaccine, and you just went on. You never disclose anything about a homeopathic treatment. You never disclose anything about you having this conversation with your doctor about being allergic to anything. This is all after the fact. After you get infected after you have possibly put other people at risk because you didn't want to or you or or because you felt or whatever that you shouldn't get you know the Fauci ouchie you know yeah um yeah I I think there's even even if you weren't to force him to disclose you know whatever allergy he may or may not have or 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 whatever treatments he may be getting like if what he was doing was evidence-based and approved by the leak he worked through, he could very easily just say, I'm not interested in disclosing, but the treatment I've gotten has been approved by like, you know, the people I work for. And Mm -hmm. that's all you have to say. You don't have to disclose stuff. So like the whole, you know, he doesn't have to disclose thing is very much the most charitable interpretation. Cause like, even by that standard, what he did was wrong and could have put people's lives at risk. And hopefully for his sake and everyone's sake, it didn't, but. It, it's a risk, you know, and that's that's not okay. Yeah. People aren't pawns in a in a weird morbid chess game. <laughs> uh, and I like my chess with wooden pieces, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> it, it seems not to be the only the I mean the only person in uh, sports who was doing this though, because there was a, a the uh, uh, basketball team, I think it was, mm-hmm. uh, who also kind of it, there are a lot of people within that sport who seem opposed to it and there was there was one one quote from uh, one of the articles uh, relating to a player uh, Kyrie Irving yeah that who, was uh, our next guy we were going to talk about <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he had issues with the uh, the NBA's protocols around vaccination mm-hmm. and, and an article from the Rolling Stone I don't know why I'm laughing it's not funny and an mm. article from Rolling Stone he stated that um, uh, it was uh, it made it was it an Instagram post he made, and yes. it claimed that secret societies are implementing implementing yes. vaccines uh, in a plot to connect black people to a master computer for a plan of Satan. Yes, now, th- there's there's one level of not disclosing things because you know. Yeah, and you want to have alternative medicine, and then there's right. a whole other level of things that you can go to. Yeah, you know, I that's why I wanted to talk specifically about you know Kyrie Irving because like Kyrie Irving has been very vocal about you know being against the vaccines, even though he never he never stated if he has gotten vaccine or not. I, I would assume not, um, especially since like he's not allowed to play. Um, in uh, states that have vaccine mandates. Um, I believe that he there are some special dispensation for away games, but not necessarily for his home state, New York, and some other states or California. And, um, and, and the thing about him specifically is that even though like a lot of people have been giving him like a lot of smoke about it because he's been voc- uh, vocal about, you know, being against it, Unlike, you know, Aaron Rodgers, at least like he's kind of upfront with his crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Upfront with his uh, thoughts about these particular vaccines. You know, we can, we'll fix that in post. Then, um, 
<laughs> but the some of the things that he has been saying specifically, because like I, I remember reading on Twitter, uh, a friend of mine saying that, you know, Aaron Rodgers has been playing all this time and, you know, he and he was not vaccinated and now he has COVID. Right. But everybody was like dragging Kyrie Irving. And I'm, but my thing is, it's like when I was reading the Rolling Stone article about some of the things that he said on Instagram, I'm like, yo, to be honest with you, and I know I'm not that great of a person. And I would drag him to, I mean, come on now. And, and here's the thing, you know, specifically with, you know, and, and I know that I've, I've said this on this show and also on other shows when I talked about the vaccines and even with some of my patients, when I was trying to uh, speak with them about, you know, why it would be in their best interest to get vaccinated, that I, I understand specifically, you know, black people's distrust of the healthcare system. It is warranted you know, and, um, and there have been terrible, horrible things that have been done to black people specifically in America, you know, in the, um, in the name of, 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 of health progress or medical progress. Um, however, I think that a lot of things that people do not keep in mind specifically, even with this group of people or our, my group of people is that COVID affected our community just as bad as like everybody, you know, socioeconomically, mortality rates, and even when it came to access to care, um, because like uh, clinics and hospitals are not as prevalent in predominantly African and American neighborhoods. So if they needed treatment because they got infected, it was going to be a lot uh, it was going to be more difficult for them to be able to get it only because of the access to healthcare, and there's still implicit bias and racism, racism in healthcare as well. So we have all those particular factors that are playing against us when it even comes to this. You know, matter of fact, I remember uh, reading uh, something from the uh, Congressional Black Caucus that said that it, when they were talking about COVID infections when on the onslaught of it, and they were seeing the mortality rates that were coming in African American neighborhoods, they would say often, you know, when America gets a cold, black people get the new, get, get, black people get pneumonia, you know, and, and this is, and this is what happens. And, and it kind of disappointed me specifically with this person being, you know, a NBA player, people look up to him, children look up to him. Um, you know, he has a platform and all these different things. And he's saying this stuff, people are going to listen to him and take what he says for, you know, for true value. And none of this stuff is like unfounded. And none of the stuff that he was saying is founded rather. And, and then when um, the article even talked about how uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar uh, said that there should be zero tolerance for this type of behavior and people who were not vaccinated should not be allowed to play. He got dragged for saying that, you know? And I'm just like, I don't understand why we are dragging people when they want folk to assume some type of social responsibility to make sure the people are safe. Uh, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, you know, I... Um... I don't want people to lie, right? And, and I don't want people to feel pressured in the way that, uh, was it Aaron Rodgers? I'm blanking on the name already. Yeah. Uh, felt, uh, <laughs> right? So like, I realized a lot of people would rather like lie than change their behavior. Um, but I, I think uh, there's a lot of truth to that, that, you know, some people are just going to lie or spread misinformation. And, and we're getting to a point where, this has impacted just all of our lives for om almost two years now, you know? Right. Um, and, and if you aren't willing to do your part to step up and help us get out of this situation, you know, so that we can go back to playing basketball when there's without needing a specific vaccine or something to get to that point, we're going to need to go through a period where maybe there are some hard rules like that. I, it, it's uncomfortable, but I, I think, um, yeah, Kareem Abdul Jabbar was spot on with uh, that. I also noticed that quote. Yeah, yeah, Agreed. yeah. I think uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, important to note as well. I, th I think it was was it Kareem Abdul Jabbar who was talking about the uh, because he was talking from the Muslim perspective. Mm -hmm. It's important to note that uh, you know just because uh, when Kyrie Irving mentioned it being a plan for Satan, 
I think having a voice from the religious perspective as well, because mm -hmm. sometimes it, it's not just ethnic communities, but it's also like religious communities in, in general who were, who were opposing these things and right. having a voice from a religious community promoting uh, vaccination and promoting these uh, not being able to play if you're not vaccinated and putting other people's life in danger is actually a good thing. And I think we should acknowledge that. And that can, hearing a voice from your own community can often speak much louder than hearing a voice from outside it. So, you know, it doesn't matter yeah. how many people from outside are saying, no, you shouldn't be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. If you've got another religious person saying you should, then you're more inclined to believe to that. So, you know, all credit to him for doing that. Oh, actually, you know who said that? It was uh, Celtic Center, um, Ennis Cantor, who is a devout Muslim. Uh, right. He said, okay. and, and this is what his quote was uh, specifically from the article, which is in the show notes below, people. Uh, if a guy's not getting vaccinated because of his religion, I feel like we are in a time where religion and science have to go together. I've told, I've talked to a lot of religious guys and I'm like, it saves people's lives. So what is more important than that? And, yeah. and yeah, I, and I appreciated him saying that. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I know how it's possible that religion and science can go together, but I, I appreciate the message and I think it's a good thing that he said it. <laughs> Right. I mean, like, that's what he said. I ain't saying that. But, you know, <laughs> I still appreciate it. You yeah. center yeah. from Celtics. I don't have to say fuck Celtics, but, you know, <laughs> for saying that specifically, you know, thank you. Uh, I and think another important point from the uh, from the article regarding the basketball players is it did mention that, you know, this is these conversations, these anti-vax conversations are happening in the dressing rooms. And this is where a lot of people are getting the misinformation from. Yeah. And and that's that's sad that these these influential players are like being influenced by each other and then yeah. going out and influencing other people. It said Kyrie Irving was visiting a school. Those kids are looking up to him. He's a hero to some of those kids. And they're seeing him with well, coming in without a mask and they might be reading the Instagram posts or the tweets or whatever it is he's doing about that and, and reading stuff and they're being influenced by that. And that to me is so sad. Yeah, especially mm. since now uh, we have uh, FDA approval to, um, to vaccinate uh, children between five to, I think between five to 12 years old now, um, they just get like a, their dosage level is uh, smaller than like an, uh, a person that is 12 years older. Uh, and I believe that the only one in the United States specifically that has been uh, FDA approved was Pfizer. So, um, and, and especially when we even have like uh, states um, that are, are also kind of stuck on silly with, you know, with when should children go to school with masks? Should they not go to school with masks? I, I think that I was even reading an article earlier that uh, a judge in Philadelphia threw out the uh, mask mandate for uh, kids in school. Um, so this is, this is a time where we, we really need to get out of this whole making a public health issue or a public health crisis like uh political like it really should be about what does the science say and what can we do as a nation as a as a globe right because like all of us are being affected by this particular infection to do the right things in order for us to keep people safe oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's get a couple just final thoughts from you guys before we can go ahead and wrap this up and go to our next segment uh, follow the guidelines in your area, uh, get vaccinated, wear a mask, be safe. That's all. Yeah. And if, mm. if you choose not to, um, and you go out and you do infect people and you kill people, don't sit there shifting the blame because it's entirely your fault and you should be, you should feel responsible for that because it is your fault. Just get vaccinated. It's easy, easiest solution. Exactly. And, um, and don't go to the Antarctic and club seals because seals are cute. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. <laughs> I was like, no, that's horrible. They're cute. They go, oh, 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 the whole thing. Okay.
Okay. Anyway, so 